Hello, Bill Molyneux here and uh, for Bill's History and Wargame World, and we are in Josh Warloff's basement in the land of 3D printing. Hello, now, uh, Josh, t today we're going to do a 10-15 minutes worth of 3D printing video, but I have to say, I see behind you on a game shelf, Wilderness Empires by Worthington Games, designed by Bill Molyneux, and I'm going to say that's close to 10 years old, and... Uh, it still has the shrink wrap. Can it, you explain that issue? It does. Uh, I just have not got around to playing it. I've actually played Struggle for New France a fair bit, but I haven't even opened Wilderness Empires yet. <laughs> Gosh, I, I'll be dead and buried before you open the damn game, but... That's a possibility. <laughs> All right. Well, we're, uh, I'm going to just try to follow you along, Josh, and uh, we can turn the video on and off, but um what, what do you want to talk to us first about well, we're going to start talking about resin printers um so i've got my nitrile gloves on to work with the resin why do you have to have gloves on well because it's caustic it can burn your skin um so you don't want it to touch your skin so i probably should be wearing safety glasses too but i'm just going to be careful all right <laughs> all right we are here in the resin printer now why do you have this printer in a closet so i have it in a closet because i so i can have better ventilation I have a HEPA filter in here. Okay. And then I have another HEPA filter in the printer itself. And what, does that take away fumes or yep, something? it takes away fumes, reduces the smell, helps keep the air cleaner around it. Uh, this one's actually a, uh, um, this one's a HEPA filter and the one in here is actually a charcoal filter, sorry. Um, but I've already got some prints finished, so I'm going to take those off. All right. And then we're going to start a new print. Oh, he lifts off the lid. Yep. And these are some... They're upside down. Uh, and they failed. They failed. Yep, so these did not print properly. Okay. Now, I've printed 10 of these already. What are they? Uh, they're little space androids, like retro-futuristic Space robots. androids. Very cool. Yep. So what we have to do is clean this build plate off now. All right. Now, because that failed, we have to clean the tank. We've got to clean the tank. So, fortunately, with the newer model printers, with the older printers, I used to have to take the tank off there completely and empty it out completely and then, like, pry all the little pieces off the film. But with this newer printer, I can just go in here and use a tank cleaning option. And I'm going to use one of these failed prints and put it down in there. Okay. Hey, it's like melting or yep. something. And then I'm going to turn this up to 30 seconds. Okay. So Click you next. could reuse the resin that didn't uh, print correctly. No, no. Once you once it's not printed correctly, it's wasted. Okay. But what I'm using that for is to create an anchor point because when I do this clean uh, clean tank option, it's going to illuminate the light across the entire bottom of the tank. Okay and cure all of the failures in there. And then I can just peel them off in one big... Oh, so you're yep. gonna take that whole gray film off yep. this glass. Yep. All right. And exposure is complete. So, well, I should be able to just... And everyone that's watching the video, I'm just letting this run and uh, you can fast forward if you're getting bored as we watch Josh do his surgical work on the 3D printer. Yep. And of course it didn't, that piece didn't give me enough of a leverage to uh, get that tank off there. So I'm actually going to have to All right. pop this off. Now should I pause the video here at this point, Josh, or I let mean, it keep if going? If you want to. Um, if not, you know, they can see how. All right. We're going to see how this works. works. Now, how complex is this 3D resin printer to, to use? I mean, do you have to be pretty knowledgeable with computers and hands-on things? I would say not particularly, um, but your mileage may vary. Um, so that's just the, the stuff I cured on there peeling right off. Okay. And then you can see the little chunks in the bottom there. The okay. unevenness is where the models failed. All right. And that happens from time to time. It could be like anything from the temperature in the room was off or like maybe I didn't have my support settings properly set up or anything like that. 
And so it's just kind of like a. So the average person, what's a what's a person going to spend on a 3D resin printer? You're going to show us the other type in a little while, yeah. but so um, what's this cost? This is a larger format one. This one costs four hundred dollars. Um, now, do you have to do anything when you get it in the box, or you just set it up and off you go? Set it up, and then you have to get the 3D files ready to put on it. Okay. Um, which you use a slicer software. For resin printers, you use something like uh, Leachy Slicer or Chitu Box. Okay. And then you put your files in the program, have them sliced to print, and you put them on a thumb drive and stick them in the printer. Okay, so... Which we're going to do that right now. All right. I've already got my uh, um, files loaded up. And because I do, we're just going to go ahead and print, press print. Um, I'm going to print more of these guys. I'm printing them for a game called Space Station Zero. Okay. And uh, they're little, you know, lost androids that are going to be roaming around that my guys have to fight. Really cool. Yep. And uh, so, now that the printer is all set again, we're going to hit print and print more. Not those guys. Those guys. Now, how long will it take this printer to create these little creatures? This will take about three hours. Three hours. And okay. it'll print. I only got. I only have five of them on there right now. I can load this build plate up, and with a resin printer, one of the neat things is is it doesn't matter how much volume you put on the build plate, width, uh, depth, and width wise, it just matters how much volume you put on the build plate height wise. For okay. Time increasing time. So, because I'm already printing one of these, I can print 10, 15 of these on here and it will take the same amount of time to print. Very good. Yep. We're going to put the cover back on there. All right, so where are we heading to next? We're going to go over to the wash and cure station I have set up and we're going to take these ones that are already printed. And we're going to process them so that they're finished. All right. I'll pause the video to that station. Yep. <clears throat> All right. We're over here at the wash station. Is that what this yep, is called? Yep, this is where I wash and cure my minis. So I use water washable resin. So I use an ultrasonic cleaner, which is a jewelry cleaning device. Okay. And I put water in there, and I heat it up to 50 degrees Celsius. And I drop these guys in there. Okay. And what's this doing? This is going to clean all of the excess resin off of the model. Okay. So that you see all the detail much better and clearer. And then I'm going to put start, and that's going to run for about five minutes. All right. Once they're done, I'll put them in the secure station for about 15 minutes. Okay. And, and this what? Makes it hard? Yep, this hardens it completely so it's all done. So like here you can see an alien hive warrior from One Page Rules that I printed up. Very cool. Yep. So this is actually a several step process yep. from the resin machine to print to, to put it in the yep. cleaner. And here you have a little Klingon Bird of Prey I printed. Ooh. And that is a very cool. One three thousand seven hundred and eighty eight scale Klingon Bird of Prey. Yep. And I put them in the cure station for about fifteen minutes. Okay. And then I flip them over and put them in for another 15 minutes. My gosh, look at all the stuff you have here. Yep. So, uh, one of the reasons I'm here to visit you, Josh, is um, I asked you to make me some German World War II half tracks. How yep. did they come out? They came out, I think they came out really well. They're right over here, Bill. Oh my God, it's Goober the Traveling Bear. <laughs> I'm not sure how he got here. I, I, he just I snuck guess right in. He just snuck right in. He's uh, so all in fun, everyone. We have Goober the traveling bear. Josh, I didn't mean to interrupt you oh, with Goober. Fine. Can you tell us how long it took to make these? These are 54 millimeter scale. Yep. So these took uh, nine and a half hours to print. I did print them on the resin printer, um, but I probably could have print them, printed them on my other FDM printer. Um, but just the resin printer is tends to be a little quicker and a little cleaner. Okay. Well, um, they, they look fantastic. I really appreciate it. And if um, someone wanted to contact you and have these built for them, um, I know there would be shipping costs, but what would someone, uh, what would this cost someone to make if you needed to make it for them if they didn't have a printer at home? Um, this would be about a $20 print. A $20 print. Yep. So if you do need a 54 millimeter German half track, contact Josh and, uh, I'll put his email on this video if he's all right with that. Absolutely. And uh, so we've done a lot here with the resin. That was made with resin. What's the other kind of printer? So the other kind of printer is an FDM printer. That's this one here. You get PLA. I'm going to take my gloves off because okay. I don't need them for dealing with this. So Josh is taking his scientific gloves off. Oh, and they tore. Now these, this printer, do you have to... Um, 
put everything in the water and cure no. and everything. No. So this printer, when you peel the stuff off the build plate, just like this. So this is a, a little terrain piece I printed on there. Uh, this took about 22 hours. Okay. Um, you can reduce the print time by like, you know, setting the detail a little differently. Um, you can see that these have a lot more layer lines in them. I'm not sure if you can pick it up on your camera. No, I can't really. Okay. There's a lot more like artifacting when you're printing in a style of printing. And okay. You have layer lines and different things. And you have to be a lot more conscious of how you support stuff. Okay. Whereas with the resin printer, you know. Well, those half tracks look incredible. Yep. So, um, the give F me a lowdown on this. The FDM printer, I need to replace the print head on right now, so it's not running right now. Um, but you get PLA, which is a type of plastic that so, comes in spools. So you're using a string rather yep. than a liquid from like the other one. Yep, and you run it across into the printer um, extruder. And then the printer will feed it down here, and it works kind of like a hot glue gun. This end heats up, and it pushes the filament through, and it comes out layer by layer. All right, so for people out here in uh, Bill's land, um, and they're considering a, a 3D printer, and they're on Amazon looking at them, which do you think is best for a new person to get into 3D printing? It really depends on what you want to do with it. If you want to print like terrain pieces and vehicles, this is probably the way to go. Um, it's um, the... FDM printers tend to be a little more temperamental, so you have to have a little more patience when working with them. Um, and they tend to be more environmentally temperamental too. Like so, you know, if the humidity down here changes, the way this behaves will, will change a little bit. Okay. And um, how about price-wise? Price-wise, this is about another. This is another four hundred dollar printer. Um, this one is a ten by ten build area, and then it'll go up to seventeen inches high. So okay. I can print a pretty large piece of terrain on here, or a vehicle on here. Um, and uh, the material for this, so the PLA for this costs $29 for a, a two pound spool. Okay. Or one kilogram spool. Um, whereas with the resin, you get a bottle that's, um, I think a, a kilogram, will cost you about 30 bucks. Okay. But you can print a lot off with that um, and just looking around your room you got 3d prints everywhere it's yes. incredible yes so yes. you just have these machines running full bore huh yeah pretty much yeah yeah like this uh the uh the space lizard bin over there let's go take a look yeah. at your space lizard all right we're at space lizard men now so what, are, what are these going to be used for they're going to be used for one pages rules grimdark future rule set um these are 3d models that one page rules prints to go with their or supplies to go with their rule set. Uh, the rule set is kind of in the vein of something like 40k or fantasy, Warhammer 40k or Warhammer fantasy. Um, but they offer their rules for free and then you can join their Patreon and get their miniatures. Wow. Um, so this entire army force here was printed on one bottle of resin. Wow. It looks incredible so, and your paint uh, I, I presume you're the one painting these. I did paint all these, yeah. Yeah, your painting skills in the old Gettysburg area gamers were always uh, phenomenal. So, uh, Josh, we're at 13 and a half minutes. I'm going to just, uh, how would you like to end off this video? Um, Is there anything special you want to show us before we say goodbye or anything to that effect? I, I don't think so. I think... And, uh, now, 2023 is coming. Yep. Uh, did, do you have a calendar for next year yet? I do not, but I am planning on ordering one from somebody I know. Really? Yep. And would that happen to be the Goober the Traveling Bear it calendar? Is the Goober the Traveling Bear calendar. Well, and you know, on the final page of the calendar on the back, you will be pictured in front of the, N the CSS Deuce Educational Museum in Kinston, uh, North Carolina. That's what I hear. <laughs> yeah. So you're one of the few humans to be on the calendar. Cool. So well, I'm I looking forward to getting that calendar, Bill. And uh, I, I hear Goober may be signing them, too. Oh, well, cool. So um, I think we'll end this video. Uh, stay safe, be kind, be courteous, and hopefully the next time we're here, Josh will have Wilderness Empires opened. Hopefully. <laughs> Thank you, Josh, for your time. You're welcome.